Welcome back guys. Today we're going to do a one year review on our Langmuir Systems CNC plasma table. So I bought this table in March of 2019 and it is currently July of 2020. So I've had this thing for about 16 months give or take now. First off I want to say if you're looking for something that you can pull out of the box and plug in and push a button and run this might not be the table for you. Not to say it is not a spectacular table though. This is a table. It is not a complete unit. So it is going to require a cutting machine. It is going to require software and there are free softwares that you can get out there, but it is not something that is its own unit in one. You're going to have to learn a separate software. You're going to have to get your own machine. They have a package deal that you can buy a machine with it, but do your due diligence and figure out what is going to be the best for you. So let's go through this thing. I'll show you what the pros were for it, what the cons were with it, how much fun I've had with it, what I would do next time and would I buy it again. But first let's watch it in action for a little bit. Okay, so here's some stuff to just kind of show you the capabilities of it and the endless opportunities. So here's some quarter inch, pretty clean cuts. Here's some hinges that I've made for my 79 F250. Would not have been able to design and manufacture these without this machine. It's been super helpful. We're also making them for some Broncos too. You can cut out sheet metal signs. As you can see, there's signs up there. It's great for nesting, not wasting material. It is all in all, it's a super capable machine, but also to get it to this point, I've had a little bit of a learning curve, partially because I am not a techie person at all. So I was starting from ground zero. So if you're starting from ground zero, this can absolutely be done, but I will warn you, there'll be a little bit of headache. And not to say that headache is Langmuir Systems fault, but this is a baseline machine. And if you are looking into getting a CNC machine, there are multiple things that you have to learn. And what I've learned is just because this machine doesn't do everything on its own, doesn't necessarily mean it's Langmuir Systems fault. It's most of the time it was operator error. So I'll go over some of the upgrades that I made, what its capabilities are now. So first off, this started its life off with a bed size of 23 by 24 and a half inches I believe so I have since bought the XL kit which I believe is $150 and that added 10 inches to my Y axis which was super helpful so now we have a bed size of 24 by 33 inches I believe and we can utilize the entire water table actually that was the first upgrade that I made was the water table and for me this is a must uh, mostly because I'm in a 280 square foot shop and there's not that great of ventilation. I have a big box pan that I can set up by the door here, but the water table, the benefits to that is number one, you can not have to worry about all the slag and stuff blowing out from underneath and it keeps your shop a lot cleaner. But then number two, probably about 70% of the contaminants or, or fumes, whatever you want to say, are caught in the water themselves. So you have a lot less nasty gases hanging out in your shop. Third upgrade that I made, and I wish it was the first upgrade that I made, but when they first came out, they did not have the X45 torches on them. They had an S45 torch, and now they come factory with that torch, but this torch, the new torch comes with hypertherm consumables and is compatible with hypertherm consumables. And when it comes to consumable life and longevity and cut quality, that made all the difference in the world. But also another thing that is super key to getting a clean cut with your plasma is clean, dry air. So the that brings me to the fifth upgrade that I made, which was a motor guard um, air filter. So I run two air filters with this. I run this one as a secondary. So this is the second one that goes through. And then the first one I run through is just a water oil separator. So that makes a huge difference in your cut quality is having clean, dry air. So the sixth upgrade that I made was this shelf down here. And this was actually really 
key for a couple reasons. One, it's good storage, and number two, it actually is gonna increase your cut quality a little bit. The reason being is this is a bolt together kit. Now, because it only bolts together on the top side, and you've got these legs that are about, I don't know, roughly 30 inches long or so, as your machine head is moving around, that base is not completely rigid. So what that shelf did for me down here is that isolated the lower legs and made this more of a rigid box. And so in that case, the machine isn't wiggling as it's cutting and everything is staying more true to itself. So if you have one of these guys, one of the OGs, I highly recommend building some sort of cross bracing, if not a shelf for extra storage on the bottom. And it will help you out a lot, not just for storage, but also for just making the machine more rigid. The sixth, I think I'm on the sixth upgrade that I made was I purchased a different uh, data cord or USB cord. The factory one, I was having issues with it and it was kind of a cheap Chinese plastic one. And so I ended up ordering this one off of Amazon. It's a 16 footer. I can leave a link in the description for it. But what this did was allow me to go all the way from my table over here and I can actually keep my computer on this table over here while I am cutting. It keeps my computer out of the junk. And then also it's a better data cord. It was faulting somehow and the arc would just stop and it would not continue the cut. So I fought with that for a while, finally figured out that it was just my USB cord. So make sure you got a good quality USB cord. So the eighth upgrade that I made to it um, wasn't too much of an upgrade, but I welded the casters onto the bottom. I think they've resolved this since then, but the OG caster mounts that they had on these things were junk. They it kind of pressed into the bottom, not really. And if you tried to move it around, they would fall out. Now, also that shelf helps with moving around down there and makes the whole unit more rigid so that that helps move that around. And I think that's all the upgrades that I've made to it. Overall, it has been a great machine. I'm gonna say my learning curve was about six months of dinking around with it in the evenings. And after about that six month mark, something clicked. I finally figured out the little nuances of the machine and how to make it run. And then within about four months, I did enough work in that next four months, just in the weekends, that it paid for the machine itself. Doing side jobs for people, cutting out signs for people, and it's just been a spectacular machine for prototyping, especially working on these hinges that I'm working on here. Um, these things, I couldn't have done it without prototyping. Imagine cutting these things out by hand. As far as maintenance goes, Slats have lasted a long time. I have, these are the factory slats actually. And I cut on this thing about twice a week. So it gets probably about four hours a week of cut time, which I know there's people out there who have put more time on their machines than that, but I know that's more time than most people put on their machines. So four hours a week ish, I think, that's a pretty good testament to this thing. Um, some issues that I've heard with people saying that they needed to lubricate the lead screw bearings here and on these guys right here. And I don't know that I would recommend doing that. I take a rag sometimes and just like dust them off, but these are made out of Delrin and Delrin is a self lubricating plastic and does not necessarily need or should have a petroleum product on it. I don't necessarily recommend lubricating these lead nuts. Just keep the dust off them, keep them clean. The other thing that I do do is I will take a clean rag and I will squirt some WD-40 on there. And about once a week I take, and you have to realize that these square tubes are your bearing surfaces. And yes, they're not precision bearing surfaces, but the cleaner you keep them, the longer that's gonna last. So I will take a little bit of WD-40 and I'll just kind of clean up the crud off of those, get underneath and around, and that's gonna help keep these bearing carriages lasting a lot longer for you. But overall, this has been a spectacular machine. I would definitely buy it again. I know they have the Pro version, which now comes with a torch height controller, so you don't just have 
an X and a Y axis. You also have a Z axis, which is super cool. I don't know if I'll upgrade to that just because of space reasons. I only have 280 square feet and space is precious. So we'll see if maybe down the road that that's a thing, but unless I move, I kind of doubt it. There are different things that you could consider downsides to this machine, but I am not gonna fault Langmuir Systems for them because if they did put the money into them, that means that money would get transferred to you and this would not be a $1,500 machine anymore. So kudos to them for keeping it simple, keeping it affordable. Yes, there's a learning curve to using it, but that's what keeps it affordable. If you had something that you could pull out of the box and push go with, it would not cost you $1,500, trust me. Only other upgrade to it that I would like to do is I would like to convert over to a hypertherm and get rid of that razor weld. Not to say the razor weld is bad, but hypertherms are just where it's at and the cut quality is phenomenal with them, but they also cost more than the machine itself. If you have one, don't give up on it. There's good Facebook groups on there for good help. So make sure to subscribe. I'll be doing more videos about tips and tricks on what upgrades you should do and just different things that make it easier to run and operate this machine. If you're considering buying one, make sure to check out the link in the description. Make sure to subscribe, make sure to like the video and go build something guys.